the two things I do want to talk about, um, let's talk about health care for a minute. It is another huge cost driver for all of you uh, in this room and across the Commonwealth. Uh, we uh, have to continue our efforts to successfully address it. Uh, again, I just came from meeting with other AGs around the country. Um, they don't deal with it as much as we have because they didn't have the wonderful individual mandate that we brought into Massachusetts. Um, there are a lot of misperceptions out there that our health care reform is the reason health care is so expensive here. I try and disabuse them of that. You should know that's not the case. Uh, the case was health care was very expensive here, uh, and there was a two-part plan including a lot of help from Rick and other members at AIM to say, let's get everybody insured and then we'll address costs. We got everybody insured. We have an individual mandate in a state where we had less than 10% or so who were uninsured, and it basically works. And now we have been and we are successful in trying to work on bending that cost curve. Uh, uh, Jay made reference to that in my introduction, and it's really important that we see we're on a good trend that we've gotten some transparency in the marketplace and we're making some changes both in the market and with the legislature that will start to bring those, those costs down. I know that um, AIM is having some health care sessions also in June uh, throughout the state, and I encourage you to attend that. If it's not anything that you know about but you feel you should know more, I think this is going to be a good educational effort to make sure that employers focus on this uh, for your employees also to know what's at stake. We, this is an area not unlike energy where we need you to have um, more skin in the game uh, and make sure that you understand what your investment is uh, and what you are paying for in a competitive marketplace for health care. It's incredibly important. And so as we move forward with the coalition that has stayed together to get everybody insured and now to cut back on costs. We have a unique opportunity here in Massachusetts as um, many of my colleagues have spent a lot of time either supporting or challenging the uh, Affordable Care Act. We'll get that answer, I guess, at the end of June as to what will happen with the Supreme Court decision. It should have in the short run not much effect on Massachusetts, but either way, and I've said this to my colleagues, you are still going to have to deal with providing accessible, good quality health care to people in your states, and I would rather that they focus on how they do that, regardless of what the outcome of the case is. We are ahead of that in Massachusetts because we've addressed those issues and we're going to continue to do it. Our role was in two years producing reports that I think did shine a light on what was going on. We had a lot of anecdotal evidence about why costs were what in one uh, provider or another around the state. But we were able to, in our first report, focus on wide disparities in prices that were paid to health care providers. We determined to be based not on quality, but really on the market leverage that the provider had to get a particular reimbursable amount. In other words, why was it $2,000 to have your knee done at one hospital and $1,000 at another place when no appreciable difference in uh, the quality of care um, that was provided? When we released that report, I think it, um, it, it showed to everybody who was paying attention to this that it was not just anecdotal anymore, that there was real evidence that there was a dysfunction in the marketplace based on this market leverage. In 2011, we produced our second report that said that payment methodology and provider size were not necessarily correlated with improved quality or reduced cost. And we think those are important findings because as we move towards away from fee-for-service to more accountable care, we've stressed consis consistently that we can't just change and do a reform over a dysfunctional marketplace. We need to address that market leverage issue at the foundation so that we don't just uh, plaster over something else that embeds that going further. And we are committed to, as I think most people in uh, Massachusetts are, to try and work our way through this. We don't always agree on how to do it, but we agree that it should be done and the transparency we've been able to provide has already shown some changes in the marketplace, some changes in legislation. Uh, there's pending legislation now. The House just released a bill last week in the Senate this week. Uh, I know that AIM and, and uh, others of you who are interested will become engaged in it. And it's important that we approach this in the way that we have in health care, um, trying to get a compromise in some ways that is going to work for everybody and move us forward in this um, debate. And I think that... Um, we have uh, introduced a couple of concepts, as we did in the energy area, that will help to provide for uh, better competition, more information for consumers to make choices about what plans they need. 
I know there's a lot of concern that people uh, will, be, will be narrowed in their choices, and if they, they can't get all the health care they need all the time, they won't be, uh, they won't be getting the health care they've been used to. Uh, I think there's a lot of education involved with that, and we do have to make choices, but I think the goal is to make sure that people can make the choices for coverage and for health care that will make sense for them without risking the chance that a child who has cancer or a parent uh, or a spouse who has some unusual but expensive disease won't be covered. We want to do that and we want to provide people the certainty that we can look at this in a way that we haven't in the past because we haven't felt that we've had to. And so we will do that and um, I think that as we move forward on this, I urge you to attend those hearings, get educated on it, uh, it's important for your legislators, frankly, to hear from you as businesses and individuals what you think about this and to educate your own employees about what this is going forward. And that is how we will get uh, good, consistent, affordable health care. Uh, we have, as you see from the awards that were presented today, and I congratulate those businesses, the kind of innovation uh, in Massachusetts that we want to encourage. And certainly in health care, uh, keeping costs down, we encourage that same kind of innovation that I know we can um, turn around into uh, better uh, providing of services, better access to health care, better results for everybody here. Um, so I think um, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. And Rick, I don't, do I have time for questions, comments? Okay. Um, so after a large round of applause, I'll take questions. <laughs> Thank you.